everyone, it's Matt Martin with The Grass Factor. Wanted to touch base with everyone today uh, about summertime and cool season grass in the transition zone. Let me walk you through a little problem we're running into. So here in Knoxville, I am far enough south where, you know, we're gonna hit 90 degrees in May. Um, for the last three years, we've hit 99, 100 degrees before the 4th of July. This year we have not. This year we have gotten extremely consistent rainfall through this growing season. Well, you know, we're, we're past the 4th of July now. Still getting rain. The issue we have run into now is the timing of the rain. We're getting afternoon rains. And as you've seen in my previous video, videos, afternoon rains, heat, humidity equals brown patch. So we've been dealing with brown patch. No big surprise there. That's a transition zone. You deal with it. Everybody knows in the transition zone, if you got fescue, it's not a matter of if you get brown patch, it's when you get brown patch. So issue number one, fescue, heat, humidity, moisture, brown patch. Number two, not as common is the issue I've run into today. So let me walk you through that. You look down in here. It's completely needled these leaves out. And it's running right down the hill with the water. You see where it's originating. Running down. Here. Started as a crescent shape and then ran down this hill. What we have here is Pythium blight. The odd thing about this is typically it's gonna settle into areas where water's held. A little later in the morning, not a lot of mycelium present. We look here you can see where it's blighted out a few different diseases maybe some gray leaf spot some brown patch what it is go in over here on this side six days ago this was not here let's see where it's steady moving
So what you saw in that video is, is Pythium. And Pythium is a problem because it causes such catastrophic damage so quickly. Uh, once it's there, it moves incredibly quickly. Um, I mean, in days, it can take over a massive area. Let me show you the progression of the Pythium uh, disease over a six day period. So you can see there how, it, I mean, it just exploded in a six day period. It ran down the hill with the, with the flow of the water. And in this particular yard, it is irrigated, um, but with the amount of rainfall we've gotten, he's only ran his irrigation system once this year. And um, I don't know if you can tell, but the lawn is 100% not drought stressed. stressed. Uh, actually dug into the soil, there's still plenty, plenty of moisture there. However, what is not happening is the canopy of the grass is not drying out. So all that moisture is staying right there in that canopy. There's not a lot of airflow. I'm surrounded by woods. And without that airflow, without that inability for the dew to dry out and for the, the rainfall to dry out at the surface, um, it's just a perfect breeding ground to, for, uh, for Pythium, especially now that our nighttime temperatures are consistently well over 70 degrees and our daytime temperatures are consistently well over 90 degrees. Um, it's just, it's the perfect thing. So now that we've got Pythium, what do we do? So I had to turn to the big guns to get the control on the, uh, on the Pythium. And uh, so I had to spray you know, Methanoxum, uh, also known as Subdue Max, uh, to control the Pythium. And it, you know, it's gonna provide adequate control. Um, I, I hope I don't have just a, a whole lot of experience spraying it. Um, even back in my golf days, uh, we just didn't use a lot of it. So interesting outcome for this year. Uh, so it may be something to keep in your mind, if, especially if you're in the transition zone or even further south. Um, you know, now that we're above 90 degrees during the day, above 70 degrees at night, and uh, lots of, of nighttime moisture, um, you know, it's, it's going to be out there. So that's one thing everybody needs to keep on their list. And it's, a, it's another thing too, it's disheartening because, you know, you're, you're putting the effort, you're trying to build the best program you can to take care of, of disease issues. Um, and I'll even show you pictures now. The yards for this time of year have not had any fertilizer on them since uh, the end of April. They still look great. Check them out. The most heartbreaking part about having the Pythium is the fact that, you know, you've been applying fungicides for brown patch and you still get Pythium. And I think what's been tough for me is that I've been having really good results running uh, fungicide PPZ, which is a 41% uh, propaganazole and Azoxy 2SC, which is a 20-something uh, percent liquid azoxystrobin, which is heritage and Banner Max, and uh, together those make up Headway, so I'm running, you know, a roll my own uh, Headway. And I've been having good control and preventative at rates of 16 ounces to the acre of each, so that's what I've been running. But apparently that is not a high enough rate to prevent the Pythium. And even though they, even though they've had fungicides applied, um, they are, <coughs> still getting disease at about the 21 day mark um, not a lot I can do about that and it's hard for me to be on a property every 21 days so uh, you know there's still gonna be brown patch uh, outbreak but <coughs> the worst part about it is then comes along Pythium and uh, it's just a whole nother demon to uh, to confront so anyway hey everybody I appreciate you watching the video today uh, coming up I'm gonna have more to comment on my yard here as you can see 
uh, not a lot of Dallas grass in the yard that uh, that used to be there. So I'll have that coming up. And of course, as I experience more things out in the field, I'll be sure to share those with you guys. And uh, you know, I think uh, I think we're, we're going to have a lot lot going on. Uh, you know, maybe even later this week as far as content. So, all right, y'all, have a good one. Thanks for watching. There's my son in boxers without shirt and some uh, camo rain boots on. Welcome to the South. All right, y'all, have a good one. Take care.